Good morning, everyone. We are uh, happy to have you with us today to hear a bit uh, about the Michigan Good Food Fund and what your role could be with the fund as uh, generally public sector employees. Um, if you have any questions throughout the pre presentation, you can type them in the Q&A box, and I believe that for you it, that would be located um, in the upper bar on your screen. Um, and if you're having any technical difficulties at this point, if you could let us know, that would be great, and we'll try to sort those out before we get going. Okay. Seeing none at the moment, um, we have uh, presenting today myself, Liz Gensler. I am an outreach specialist with the MSU Center for Regional Food Systems. Uh, Lori Yelton here with me in the room, who is a nutritionist in the Food and Dairy Division with the Michigan Department of Ag and Rural Development. Um, Ian Wiesner, the Senior Loan Officer with Capital Impact Partners, who is joining us remotely. And also remotely is Meredith Freeman, Program Director from the Fair Food Network. So we're here today to talk about the Michigan Good Food Fund, which is a pretty new public-private partnership uh, loan and grant fund that provides financing and business assistance to good food enterprises that are specifically benefiting underserved communities across Michigan. We believe in, an investment in good food is a good investment for our future. So particularly in Michigan, um, which is second most agriculturally diverse state and nation, only second to California. We have a lot of food and agriculture, and we have major drivers in our state, and this is a major um, driver in our state's economy. It's contributing about $101.2 billion annually, and that's increased about 15% just from 2010 to 2014. Despite this abundance of agriculture, more than 1.8 million Michigan residents, including 300,000 children, live in lower income communities with limited access to healthy fruits and vegetables that they need. The lack of access to healthy food has serious health implications as well. More than 30% of Michiganders are obese. That's about the second highest uh, rate of obesity in the Midwest area. And this is not a rural or an urban area problem or issue. Um, this is impact both across the state of Michigan. Uh, communities of color um, bearing a disproportionate burden. Also, this serious um, health um, Im implication has serious economic impact on our state. Michigan currently spends $3 billion annually on obesity-related medical expenses. By increasing access to nutritious food, we can improve the health of Michigan residents. Um, we can drive economic development, job creation, transforming the communities across the state into places of opportunity. We can invest today to build a healthier Michigan tomorrow. Specifically, the Michigan Good Food Fund is working to advance the following goals and priorities. Increasing access to healthy food is a means to improve health of Michigan residents drive economic development and job creation to grow Michigan's economy, um, promoting and ensuring equity of access to food, jobs, ownership, um, and flexible investment capital, promoting environmental stewardship, encouraging sustaining environmental practices, and increasing and sourcing supply of locally grown and regionally produced foods. So um, the way that we are approaching this is what the Michigan Good Food Fund is set up to do is to approach this issue of healthy food access uh, by investing um, in healthy food projects throughout the, the food economy. So um, everything from production to distribution uh, to retail. And we've assembled a group of partners uh, uh, really a public-private partnership to to achieve the, those goals. So Capital Impact Partners, uh, we are a national nonprofit uh, community development financial institution or a nonprofit mission-driven loan fund. Um, and we are acting as both a fund manager and as a lender um, in the program. Uh, and then we are working and partnering with um, the food access organizations, Fair Food Network, uh, and also um, the Center for Regional Food Systems at, at MSU 
Um, and then our, our primary funding partner and investor is, is Kellogg. And so Capital Impact will be playing the role of the direct lender and, and fund manager. Fair Food Network is um, leading the communications efforts and is one of the primary business assistance partners, uh, especially for retail and small batch processing um, projects. Um, the Center for Regional Food Systems is also um, one of the leaders in the business assistance and, and is working um, in helping to develop the pipeline for more agricultural products, production and distribution, um, and also processing plants. Um, so the fund that we are putting together, we're targeting a $30 million loan fund and we're still developing the fund, although the fund is active and able to do loans right now. Um, and as I said, we are aiming at investing throughout the food economy. And so um, we're, we are looking at projects that can be anything from small production type projects to distribution to larger retail projects. Um, we're looking at a large range in terms of the kind of size of loans that we can do, anything from small, almost micro loans in the $10,000 range, all the way up to large multi-million dollar uh, real estate transactions. Um, and in terms of the, uh, how are we approaching healthy food access? What do we mean by that? Um, we're really trying to um, both increase the access to, to healthy foods in low-income communities by creating new retail outlets, by creating um, new uh, avenues of distribution of fresh foods to, to those areas, and also production of fresh foods in, in low-income and underserved areas, um, and then also increase um, the, um, also investing in entrepreneurs uh, in, in diverse communities throughout Michigan, um, to be able to help provide those, those healthy foods. And I think when, when we talk about equity um, in, in the fund and, and working through the lens of equity, we're really talking about equity in terms of serving a diverse group of Michiganders, both diverse in terms of ethnic diversity, in terms of diversity across income levels, and in terms of diversity um, across the state and, and working in communities across the state. Um, so as I mentioned, we are going to have a variety of loans uh, available through the program. Uh, larger loans, uh, so loans of $250,000 uh, and above, um, will be done directly by Capital Impact Partners. Um, and as I said, we're a national nonprofit organization that has experience in doing this type of work. Um, we do it. Uh, we have a headquarter. We have an office in Detroit. Uh, we're headquartered in Arlington, Virginia, and have an office in Oakland. California and in our office in Oakland, um, we've been um, administering a, a similar program uh, called the California Fresh Works Fund, um, where we've been doing this type of lending and we've already been doing some of this type of lending here in Michigan and, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, for the smaller loans, $250,000 and below, uh, we'll be working with a group of intermediary lenders who are more small business focused. So this will be things um, more like working capital loans, or small equipment type loans. Um, and that will be done through other primarily nonprofit intermediary lenders who have uh, more of a focus and expertise in that small business lending. Uh, and so we will be uh, identifying and working with different intermediary lenders uh, throughout the state. Um, our first intermediary lender that's um, joining the program is Northern Initiatives, uh, who will be uh, servicing the upper half of the state up into the UP. And then um, we are in the process of identifying intermediaries that'll be working in the lower portion of the state and Southeast Michigan. Um, a couple of um, other specific programs we wanted to point out. One is the New Markets Tax Credit Program. Uh, New Markets Tax Credits are a federal subsidy meant to increase uh, investment in low-income communities. Uh, so this is a subsidy that can work very well with uh, in conjunction with the Michigan Good Food Fund. Um, and I can talk a little bit more sp specifically about how that program works. I'll, I'll talk about it later uh, about a, in a specific example, um, but also happy to answer more questions. But basically what it does is bring in 
uh, private equity uh, through through federal tax credits into a transaction, which can result in um, below market um, interest rate and debt service, as well as a, a debt forgiveness uh, mechanism that can forgive up to 20% of the total debt. So it's a very attractive product, but it's also very competitive. Um, and so availability is limited, but, but if you can get it, and it's generally for projects of kind of $6 million and above, so larger projects, uh, it can be very, um, uh, very beneficial. You know, and, and the other thing we wanted to point out, and, uh, and I'll turn it over to Meredith, who will talk more about this, is that there we are, in conjunction with the loan fund, pro, we're going to be partnering with um, the Center for Regional Food Systems and Fair Food Network um, to offer complementary um, business assistance and, in some cases, um, related grants to the loans. Great, thanks. So in, in addition to the financing, um, like Ian stated, we'll also be offering business assistance. And the business assistance will, will have two primary goals. Number one, to help entrepreneurs take their ventures to the next level. We know most business owners need some help at some point during the life of their business. And so we are really hoping to be able to provide some of that assistance um, so that these businesses can grow and thrive and also to build a pipeline of investment ready enterprises. So we want to make sure that any business assistance is um, provides an avenue to capital. So we don't wanna just provide assistance and there's no capital um, access at the end of that. So those are the two primary goals for us for business assistance. And they will, the assistance will be offered in a variety of formats from anywhere from webinars, like something's very similar to what we're doing now for very general topics um, to workshops regionally that um, folks can come in and uh, do some one-on-one -on -one work and network with others in their area, as well as some um, very individualized, uh, very custom um, assistance for those uh, businesses that just need a little more help to get them to, to the next phase. So the Michigan Good Food Fund is in very good company around uh, the country in terms of being a statewide loan fund. Um, Ian mentioned the, the California Freshworks Fund, which we pretty studied pretty intensely and used as a model for creating the Michigan Good Food Fund. Um, but as you can see, there are several states and actually a couple of cities who have embarked on um, healthy food financing initiatives. Um, Pennsylvania Fresh Food Financing Initiative was actually one of the first um, and is uh, uh, large, the second largest only to, to California, and they have a very uh, proven track record um, in uh, financing healthy food uh, initiatives. So the Pennsylvania Fresh Food Financing, again, is one of the very first funds, um, and it's created about 88 new or expanded stores, led to 5,000 jobs, and increased access for nearly 500,000 people. Um, California Freshworks has been um, it's, has been in operation not quite as long as the Pennsylvania Fund, but has already had several retail uh, locations lead to a forty million dollar economic impact um, and an expected thirty million dollar annual recurring impact. So now I'll turn it back to Liz to talk about how the Michigan Good Food Fund is unique. Thanks, Meredith. Um, so as Meredith said, we have um, some predecessors in this work who have done some really great things. Um, and we've certainly built the Good Food Fund off of those successes. Um, but the Michigan Good Food Fund is unique compared to those other efforts um, for a few reasons. The first is represented in this graphic that we're really working across the value chain. Um, so we're supporting efforts from field to fork that include enterprises that grow, distribute, and sell fresh and healthy food to reach those low-income populations. Um, so some of the things that might happen would be sort of the traditional model of um, supporting a, a, a supermarket to um, remodel or to locate in an underserved area. Um, other types of Projects could include a food incubator in need of tenant improvements to um, provide commercial space for smaller food entrepreneurs, or a producer purchasing high capacity equipment to improve yield and increase sales. So we're really kind of trying to cover the whole spectrum of um, food entrepreneurs 
that could serve the low-income communities here. Um, another piece that makes this a, a unique fund is that we have a serious focus on equity. And we are working to ensure that um, the supported projects benefit historically underserved communities in terms of greater access to healthy food, jobs, and economic benefits, while also ensuring that we serve the projects that are often overlooked by traditional financing sources and may not be able to get capital um, through the usual um, banks and whatnot. So the final sort of unique asset here is that um, we're leveraging some of the, the programs that are unique to Michigan, um, like Double Up Food Bucks. And we're grounding the Michigan Good Food Fund in the goals of the Michigan Good Food Charter and supporting progress toward the charter's goal that 20% of the food consumed in Michigan is, uh, that it comes from Michigan by 2020. Um, we're also looking for projects to intentionally incorporate programs like SNAP, WIC, Project Fresh, and Double Up Food Bucks into their projects as much as they're able. Finally, we just wanted to acknowledge that um, one of the things that um, really makes this a, a strong program is leveraging our, our state's infrastructure and capacity um, and pulling together a broad coalition of industry, nonprofit, higher education, government, and philanthropic partners. So we've had a, a task force with us to inform the creation of the fund, and we're going to continue um, with an advisory board of partners from across the state to really um, support the work and inform how it goes forward as we get into implementation. All right, and so Meredith, I'll talk about eligibility. So um, as Liz was saying, we're, the goal is really to support food businesses across the value chain. And so the types of projects that we'd uh, be looking to support include um, supplies and equipment for agriculture, um, distribution and aggregation through food hubs and other methods, uh, retail, as uh, Ian was talking about, through whether it's um, equipment for grocers or uh, big real estate deals for new or expanded grocery stores, as well as processing large and small. So from the small scale processors making jam to the large protein processors that MSU works with on a regular basis. In terms of location for eligibility, locations must be within or serving Michigan. That's the primary goal. Um, and then within low or moderate income census tracts or tracts with limited access to healthy foods and or serving such communities. But I will say the, um, the uh, preference is to work with companies that are located within these census tracts. So the expenses that um, can be supported through the fund include um, pre-development expenses, uh, workforce development, inventory working capital, planning and design expenses for the real, real estate projects, professional services, construction and rehab, including facade improvements, um, again, equipment and things like leaseholder improvements. And then um, again, as uh, Liz stated earlier, we really want to make sure that projects align with nutrition assistance programs. So projects must make good faith efforts to accept federal and state benefits um, or maximize federal food nutrition programs if relevant. Um, for grocery stores, uh, we would really love uh, not only for them to take SNAP and WIC, but also to be Double Up Food Bucks projects uh, partners as well. So Ian is going, oh, I think I have one more, sorry. <laughs> Do I? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, so other criteria, the goals of the Michigan Good Food Fund they were looking for in terms of projects, again, healthy food access, economic development and job creation, um, equitable access to jobs as well as the capital, um, environmental stewardship and local sourcing. So Ian will talk a little bit about um, financing. Sure. So we wanted to provide um, some examples of the types of projects uh, that we are looking at and, and can finance. 
Um, so the first example that we have here, Banner Supermarket. This is a project that Capital Impact um, invested in in partnership with many of the same partners that are part of the Michigan Good Food Fund. It's as an existing grocery store on the northwest side of uh, Detroit, uh, owned by a um, Iraqi immigrant family um, that has owned stores uh, throughout Michigan um, for many years. They own about 14 stores, uh, mostly in the Detroit area and then some in Kalamazoo. Um, and so this project allowed them to take their existing store in kind of an underinvested area in Northwest Detroit um, and essentially double it in size, um, all brand new equipment, refresh the store, increase um, the availability of produce uh, in the store. Uh, and so a large project we're really excited about. Um, the project is actually nearing completion of construction now. Uh, and as I mentioned, was done in partnership with Detroit Economic Growth Corporation. Uh, Kellogg is one of the, um, uh, provides some direct support for the project. Um, also, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase was an investor uh, through the New Markets Tax Credit Program. Um, this is uh, uh, also a project where we're utilizing the federal uh, healthy foods financing uh, dollars that's helping to support this as well. So, so really bringing together many of the same core partners um, that are part of the um, uh, Good Food Fund. Um, as I mentioned, it's, it's using the new markets tax credit um, subsidy, which was how we were able to bring in the uh, equity from JP Morgan Chase, uh, which will come in as, uh, which comes in as debt dollars initially, but will um, then be forgiven after, uh, after the seven year tax credit vesting period. Um, you know, and, and as we say here, this is a store uh, where the majority of customers are using SNAP benefits uh, to make their purchases. Um, 35 new jobs uh, added um, through the program in this neighborhood. And so uh, I think exactly the type of project that we want to continue to finance. And like I said, this store will be opening up. It's, it's actually already open and um, folks can already um, shop in the new section of the store but they'll be doing a grand opening um, shortly when construction's completely finished. So as public sector employees, I think we have to really ask what role will we play in this and what can we do? And I think the biggest part is gonna be spreading the word on this um, loan fund so that businesses or people trying to look for um, ways to encourage or to increase their businesses, um, we can help with that. A um, couple ways we can do this, just boots on the ground, you know, assisting through our networks or just in your normal course of business in the day when you see you are out there doing something with other um, businesses, you can, and they bring up something that may be related, remembering this um, fund is gonna be important to that. We can also offer resources through your own agency. For example, through the Michigan Department of Agriculture, we have ag development that helps with planning. Um, your local health departments help with food planning as well um, in businesses. But I think the biggest thing is we really need to have public education and communication. We need to spread the word on this fund. I think if we take something home with this, take home that website um, down in the corner of your slide, the www.michigangoodfoodfund.org, because that's going to be the one thing that, that you can pass on when you're trying to remember all the details of this presentation mm -hmm. that they can take with them and um, look into how to apply. So the American Heart Association um, about a year and a half ago or so launched a healthy food access campaign um, that's parallel to kind of the Michigan Good Food Fund, um, but complementary in, in a lot of ways, obviously. Um, this, the states that we listed earlier that also have healthy food financing initiatives uh, many of them have uh, state dollars designated for their funds. Um, currently, the Michigan Good Food Fund is um, um, capitalized by private dollars, um, except for the uh, HFFI money, the $3 million award through the Treasury Department. But there are no currently no state funds um, part of the Michigan Good Food Fund. So the American Heart Association's Healthy Food Access Campaign is seeking um, $10 million uh, for the Michigan legislature for uh, to for healthy food financing. Um, they commissioned a report and published it probably earlier this year called Food for Every Child, which really documents food access issues across the state of Michigan. 
Um, and Lori and I were in a meeting with them a couple of weeks ago where they gave us an update on where they are now. Um, they've met with about 90 plus lawmakers and all agree with the concept of a healthy food financing initiative. And they hope to have enrollment of the legislation by the end of the year in a hearing on the legislation by early 2016. Um, they are also very clear that they are asking for new dollars and not, to, um, not dollars from existing programs. So any questions or comments, um, we'd love to um, see what's on your mind and uh, answer any questions if possible. And with this technology, there's the Q&A box where you can type your questions, but if you have something that's a little more detailed or would just prefer to ask it um, verbally, if you raise your hand, I can turn on the audio for you so that you're able to uh, ask of the panelists uh, without having to type it in. So we have a question from Donna asking, is job creation a criteria for accessing the fund? And uh, along with that, James asks, must an op operation be nonprofit? So Ian or Meredith, you wanna touch on those? So I would say job creation is one of the criteria that we're looking at, but it wouldn't necessarily kill a deal if there aren't jobs created, but we are definitely looking to create jobs. Um, and operations can be for-profit or non-profit. So to qualify for a loan, how much personal capital investment is required? So it varies and we'll look at situations on a um, deal by deal basis, you know, as a nonprofit mission driven loan fund. Um, one of the things that uh, differentiates us from a, from a traditional bank is that you know, we are oriented towards trying to get these high impact deals done uh, and are going to be flexible um, in order to make that work. Uh, that being said, you know, typically we're going to want to see around 10% equity uh, into a project. Um, uh, and that can be in the form of um, personal equity that could potentially be in the form of grants or other types of subsidy. Um, certainly we're looking to make sure that the entrepreneur um, uh, has some financial stake in the success of the project. So that is something we think is important to see. But, but like I said, we'll be flexible in trying to work with projects that we think are, are valuable and meet the goals of the fund. Any other questions? Okay. Um, Ian, Donna wants to know, do you coordinate identifying potential new market tax credit partners when a viable project is identified? Yes, that's a role we often play in terms of helping to bring all of the folks needed for a transaction together. You know, we, we played that role very much in the uh, banner transaction, for example, but we have close relationships with the folks who typically, it's a small world of investors in these projects. It's typically the large money center banks like Chase, like PNC. So, and we have relationships with those folks. Uh, we have relationships with other uh, new markets tax credit allocatees and, and lenders. So yes, that's a role we often, we often play. Right. Um, and a really good question, who in all these organizations is our first contact to be with? <laughs> so yes, a little oversight on our part. Sorry about that. Um, Meredith, do you want to answer that? Right, that's a great question. Um, so we would suggest that any inquiries um, go through the Michigan Good Food Fund website, um, which is migoodfoodfund.org. Um, it can be general questions, it can be a request to be added to the newsletter mailing list, as well as um, inquiries and requests for business assistance and financing. That should be your first stop. And then we have a process where um, those inquiries are sent to the appropriate partner to respond to. And is there a website to look at whether a project falls within a low-income census area? 
There okay. is, and we have gotten this question before, and I don't have it right off the top of my head. So I think that that's something that we can post, Liz, at some point, or email yep. it out to the participants. Yeah, we can do that. Any other questions? Okay. I'm not seeing, oh, here we go. Uh, would a nonprofit healthcare system be eligible to apply? Certainly, uh, you know, I think if there was um, a connection to kind of healthy food access, certainly that would be something we'd be interested in, in exploring. We also do capital impact specifically, um, do a lot of work uh, in the healthcare industry and, and specifically with fairly qualified health clinics. So, um, you know, we're always looking to make those sorts of connections. So we'd be, you know, love to hear about interesting projects that, that kind of can connect the health uh, system to uh, um, to help you food access. Right. Any other questions? And if we don't have more questions um, right now, as Meredith said, there is um, certainly the Good Food Fund website, migoodfoodfund.org, where um, you can find lots of information and um, pieces to kind of keep with you and hand out to people as you um, go through your work and encounter people who might be good candidates for these loans. Um, you can also contact us uh, I believe the address is info at migoodfoodfund.org, um, and that uh, that email address will be kind of your first line of contact. And um, Michelle Van Houten is the one who would respond to you there, and she will help direct people to um, if they're you know ready to jump right into financing, then she'll connect them with Ian. If somebody is looking for uh, business experience, business or technical assistance, then it would go to um, Meredith or us at uh, the Center for Regional Food Systems. Um, we do have another question. Uh, how much of the available funding is used as um, for loans versus grants? Mm -hmm. So the there, this is not a grant program. It really is a financing program. And so the only grants that will be available will um, be technical assistance or business assistance grants, and they'll be very small, very selective. They will not be issued by RFP, but on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah, I think the grants um, are really complementary and to help prepare people to be ready for a loan. Yes, thank you. All right. If we have nothing else, um, I think we can wrap up. I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, like I said, you're always welcome to um, contact us through the info at email address or um, through, uh, through any one of us um, at the Center for Regional Food Systems, Fair Food Network, um, or Capital Impact Partners. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be available on the Michigan Good Food Fund website uh, once we get everything downloaded and cleaned up. So if you have colleagues who weren't able to make the webinar or if you uh, want to check in on things again, you are welcome to share that with them. Please do. Um, I think I, for, 
for all of us, uh, I'd like to say thank you for spending this time to get to know a little bit more about the Michigan Good Food Fund and uh, helping us get the word out so we can develop that um, the pipeline of great food entrepreneurs who can help achieve that goal of getting more food into underserved areas. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.